A black hole is usually a place in space where no light exists, making it all but impossible to capture on film. The recent revelation of a supermassive black hole pointed toward the Earth has sent chills down the spines of many people. Scientists made this unusual discovery after they noticed changes in one of our galaxies. And they have been forced to reclassify this galaxy because of this black hole at its center aiming right at our planet. Should we be worried about this previously unknown supermassive black hole that is tilted towards us? What threat do black holes pose to our existence? And would the Earth survive if it were to be swallowed up by a black hole? Join us in this video as we investigate how a supermassive black hole has suddenly shifted position to lock onto Earth. Although we live in a beautiful and exciting universe, it is not all rosy. Scientists recently discovered that there is a supermassive black hole very close to our planet. This latest spatial development was announced in March 2023 by the Royal Astronomical Society of the United Kingdom. As expected, this news has generated tension across the scientific community, forcing researchers to put on their thinking caps and return to the drawing board. It all began when a team of astronomers chose to reclassify a galaxy after they discovered that the supermassive black hole at its center had changed direction. The highlight of this activity was that the black hole was now directly facing the Earth. So, you can understand the look of surprise on their faces as they kept studying the data obtained from the high-tech telescopes. This unusual galaxy is known as PBC J2333-92343. And it is positioned 657 light years away from our planet. We owe our knowledge of this enigmatic galaxy and its black hole to the efforts of scientists at the Royal Astronomical Society. Astronomers were forced to resume study of this galaxy after it began showing peculiar properties. Dr. Lorena Hernandez Garcia of the Royal Astronomical Society revealed that scientists hypothesized that the relativistic jet of the galaxy's black hole had changed its direction. This hypothesis was born out of several investigations carried out on the galaxy and the August visitor dwelling inside. Initially, we all assumed that PBC J 2333 2343 was a giant radio galaxy. Scientists had arrived at this conclusion because it had, at one point, sent out jet material from each side. To add spice to this discovery, the galaxy had measured a surprising 4 million light years across, which was nearly 40 times the size of our galaxy. Little did they know that they were in for a shock in the coming months. While observing the galaxy, astronomers spotted an unannounced change in the space phenomenon. It had tilted by 90 degrees and was now pointing its center towards the Earth. Before now, the galaxy had been pointing into the plane of the sky, perpendicular to us. However, the noticeable transformation is that it is shining like a spotlight pointed directly at our planet. As astronomers rarely come by such a discovery, they wasted no time in reaching out to the rest of their colleagues in the scientific community to give a second, if not third, look at the observed data. This decision led to a unanimous conclusion for everyone. We no longer had a radio galaxy on our hands. The galaxy was reclassified as a blazer, which means that it is a galaxy with a jet point, one that is directly pointed towards Mother Earth. The galaxies called blazars are very high energy objects. Thus, they are one of the most powerful phenomena in the universe and have joined the long list of space objects we should be wary of. From what scientists tell us, blazars are a subgroup of black holes in the center of a galaxy. This center is also known as Active Galactic Nucleus AGN. Blazars are characterized by having their relativistic jet pointed toward the observer. Now we are made to understand that there is no stark difference between blazars and other AGNs. The only distinguishing feature is that we can observe or see blazars more closely because they are pointed in our way. As expected, scientists are not giving this black hole a breathing space as they keep investigating the phenomenon every other day to uncover something new. Their efforts have yielded many gains in space research. For instance, it has been brought to our attention that the jet material from the black hole has created two huge lobes on either side of the galaxy. When observed from radio waves, it is almost impossible to miss these lobes. They are positioned conspicuously on the galaxy's surface. Another interesting fact about the lobes was brought to light by Dr. Lorena Hernandez-Garcia. 
Garcia made it known that the nucleus was no longer feeding these lobes, and this can only mean one thing, that the lobes are old. They are now relics of past spatial activity and have been replaced by younger structures that are much closer to the nucleus. These structures are not only younger but are more active jets. The reclassification of PBCJ 2333. 9. 2343 is proof of how one spatial event can change the trajectory of objects in the Milky Way. For example, the glowing radio lobes of the galaxy are no longer receiving the required attention from the nucleus. Also, radio emissions from the galaxy have become enhanced. We owe this development to the change in the direction of the jet. Astronomers have found out that the radio flares coming from this galaxy are so strong that they have overshadowed other radio signals coming from the rest of the galaxy and other radio galaxies in view. PBCJ 2333 9 2343 not only stepped into the limelight but is asking for our undivided attention. By now you are probably wondering what caused PBCJ 2333 9 2343 to change its direction and chart a new course toward the Earth. You are not the first person to be bothered by this thought. As soon as the discovery was made, scientists began pondering this question, and some of them concluded that PBCJ 2333 9 2343 collided with another galaxy. This hypothesis makes sense because how do we explain this sudden change in direction? Nevertheless, some scientists are not satisfied with this idea. Therefore, they have made it their mission to uncover the cause of this peculiar occurrence. We can only wait and see what their investigations will reveal at the end of the day. Moreover, we should know that this is not the first time scientists are reclassifying a celestial object. Pluto is a fresh example. New findings about the planet prompted the International Astronomical Union IAU, to downgrade the status of Pluto from a full-sized planet to a dwarf planet. This was because Pluto failed to meet all the three criteria that the IAU used to classify a celestial object as a full-sized planet. Moving forward, it is important to note that ever since the news of the reclassification of PBC found its way to the public, scientists have been on their toes. They are constantly barraged with the same question, although in different formats. People want to know the implication of having a supermassive black hole pointed towards our direction. The question on everyone's lips is whether our solar system is in any danger because of this threatening black hole. Scientists have put to rest this growing concern by giving us an in-depth understanding of these supermassive black holes and black holes in general. Supermassive black holes are the largest type of black holes and they are characterized by having their mass in the order of millions or billions of times the mass of the sun. Nevertheless, this is not to say that we don't have supermassive black holes whose mass is in the order of hundreds of thousands of the mass of the Sun. However, they are clearly distinguished from other black holes of lower mass classification. We can't tell the story of supermassive black holes without mentioning the name Martin Schmidt. Schmidt, a Dutch-American astronomer credited for notable astronomical discoveries and research such as the Schmidt Law, was the first scientist to discover a supermassive black hole. Schmidt came upon his discovery while he was investigating a radio source, 3C273, in 1963. At first, Schmidt thought that he had stumbled upon a star. However, the puzzling and peculiar features of the spectrum were a hint that he was dealing with something much different. Further observations showed that it was hydrogen emission lines that had been redshifted. This meant that the object was located several billion light years away. Not only that, it was also emitting an immense amount of energy equivalent to hundreds of galaxies. More so, the rate of light variations of the source was dubbed a quasi-stellar object or quasar. This suggested that the emitting region had a diameter of one parsec or less. By 1964, scientists had uncovered four such sources. Fred Hoyle and W.A. Fowler also contributed to the research on supermassive black holes. In 1963, the duo proposed the existence of hydrogen-burning supermassive stars, or SMS for short, as an explanation for the compact dimensions and high-energy output of quasars. These stars had masses in the order of between 10 to power 5 and 10 to power 9, the mass of the Sun. Consequently, Fowler proposed that these supermassive stars would experience a series of collapse and explosion oscillations, and this helped explain the energy output pattern. 
In the succeeding years, scientists kept on researching this peculiar phenomenon and uncovering new facts. This include the 1978 discovery of evidence for a massive dark object located at the core of the active elliptical galaxy, Messier 87. Later on, astronomers discovered similar behavior in other galaxies, such as the Andromeda Galaxy in 1984 and the Sombrero Galaxy in 1988. 1971 is another landmark year when it comes to black hole research. That year, Donald Lyndon Bell and Martin Rees hypothesized that the center of the Milky Way galaxy would contain a massive black hole. Seven years after this prediction was made, Sagittarius A asterisk was discovered on February 13, 1978. The supermassive black hole was discovered and named by astronomers Bruce Balick and Robert Brown. The scientists discovered the black hole's existence using the Green Bank Interferometer of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. They had stumbled upon a radio source that emitted synchrotron radiation, and this source was found to be dense and immobile because of its gravitation. This maiden discovery was our confirmation that a supermassive black hole existed at the center of the Milky Way. The launch of the Hubble Space Telescope in 1990 paved the way for more effective research on supermassive black holes. Scientists could now perform better refined observations of galactic nuclei. When the faint object spectrograph instrument of the Hubble telescope was used to observe Messier 87 in 1994, astronomers realized that ionized gas was orbiting the central part of the nucleus at a velocity of plus or minus 500 kilometers per second. The Event Horizon Telescope is another technological masterpiece that has played a pivotal role in the study of supermassive black holes. Launched in 2009, the Event Horizon Telescope Project is an array of radio telescopes with an angular resolution capable of observing objects the size of a supermassive black hole's event horizon. At the time of its launch, the project was tasked with some observational targets, such as the black holes at the center of the supergiant elliptical galaxy, Messier 87, and Sagittarius A asterisk at the center of the Milky Way. A decade after it was established, the Event Horizon Telescope published the first image of a black hole at the center of Messier 87 on April 10, 2019. The telescope had made this observation at a wavelength of 1.33 millimeters and with a theoretical diffraction limited resolution of 25 micro arc seconds. This was followed by the unveiling of a polarized based image of the black hole, which helped in having a better understanding of the forces responsible for quasars. Three years after the first image of Messier 87 was made public, scientists revealed that the telescope had captured the first image of the supermassive black hole at the center of Sagittarius A asterisk. The discovery was announced to the public on May 12, 2022. The fact that one would not experience a significant tidal force until very deep into the supermassive black hole's event horizon is another reason why their formation has been a subject of interest. Scientists are still actively trying to determine the origin of black holes, as new hypotheses of their source keep sprouting up every other day. Nevertheless, astrophysicists have come to a general agreement that black holes can grow by accretion of matter and merging with other black holes. Similarly, astronomers are yet to agree on a widely accepted theory as regards the formation of progenitors of supermassive black holes. For a long time, scientists have sought to know how these progenitors, also known as seeds, are created in the first place. One popular hypothesis is that given sufficient mass nearby, the seed could accrete to become an intermediate black hole and possibly a supermassive black hole if the accretion rate persists. There is no cause for us to be afraid of black holes harming us because the closest supermassive black hole is about 26,000 light years away in the center of the Milky Galaxy. Furthermore, the gravitational effects of the PBC supermassive black hole are negligible on our planet. Another interesting fact that should quench any lingering fear is that black holes don't emit any light or radiation that is detrimental to us back on Earth. After hearing this, you are probably wondering how black holes are discovered in the first place. The answer to this question lies in understanding that black holes are detected through the action of their gravitational pull on nearby matter, such as stars and gas. Therefore, this superimposing black hole pointing towards Earth poses no threat to our lives or that of the other beings on the planet. In addition, it is unlikely that a supermassive black hole would start moving toward the Earth, and in the event that this happens by chance, it would take millions of years before it reaches our planet. This gives us enough time to prepare and take preventive measures its possible impact. 
Nevertheless, some space enthusiasts have posed an engaging question to scientists. What if the supermassive black hole was actually coming to the Earth? What does it imply? To answer that question, the first thing that we would notice is that the view from Earth would gradually change over time. At first, the black hole would appear as a distant point of light in the sky, just like a star. Now, as the black hole moves closer, its gravitational pull becomes stronger, and it starts to distort the light from the stars behind it. This would create a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing usually occurs when a massive celestial object, such as a galaxy cluster, causes a sufficient curvature of space-time for the path of light around it to be visibly bent, as if by a lens. The body which causes the light to curve accordingly is called a gravitational lens. In essence, the closer the black hole moves toward the Earth, the more pronounced the gravitational lensing effect will become. The black hole would become close enough that its tidal forces would begin to affect our planet, and in response, the Earth would start to deform. This deformation phase of the Earth would cause it to be stretched into an elongated shape. Here's where it gets more eerie. As the black hole steps even closer, the gravity would become so strong that it could tear our planet. And this event would happen when the black hole is yet to even get to the Earth. The consequence of the closeness of the black hole to our planet is that the Earth's material would be sucked into the black hole's event horizon, little by little. This event horizon is known as the point of return beyond which nothing can escape the black hole's gravity. At this point, if there is any miracle that would prevent the Earth from going into oblivion, it has to happen before it gets to the event horizon. There is no saving the Earth after it crosses this threshold because the horizon's gravity is so strong that anything that enters the black hole will not return. No wonder the event horizon has been dubbed a one-way ticket out of the universe. Although it is very unlikely that this event would happen, there are still a few contrary thoughts on what would happen to the Earth if it were to be swallowed by a black hole. To understand why it is seen as almost impossible for the black hole to get to the Earth, we should know that there are over a hundred million black holes in the Milky Way. More so, it has not been easy to detect most of these black holes. Nevertheless, the emergence of high-tech space equipment such as the Hubble Space Telescope and Event Horizon Telescope has changed this narrative. When asked, scientists say that if someone were to fall inside a black hole, gravity would stretch the fellow out like spaghetti and death would come before the individual reaches the singularity. However, if we are ever to visit a black hole, then it should be a supermassive black hole such as the M87. This black hole is 3 million times wider than the Earth and would protect us from singularity. The vastness of this supermassive black hole means that one is far away from the singularity. So, when we go over the event horizon, which is over 3 billion miles away, we would float for a long while and may even last up to a year inside the black hole. Shocking, isn't it? That's what several hours of research on black holes and theoretical calculations have birthed. However, at some point, one would meet his end inside the black hole. Now, what should be avoided are black holes that have accretion disks. But only about 1% of supermassive black holes accumulate these fast spinning rings of matter. The powerful magnetic fields from these accretion disks would immediately shut down a person's nervous system and stretch the atoms into thin rods till the fellow dissolves into oblivion. Therefore, if for any reason we were to journey through such a black hole, then entry has to be done perpendicular to the disk, far from the edge of the fiery ring. An intriguing part of this visit is that as we near the black hole, we would see the light of the universe warped by the black hole's intense gravity. In addition, we would notice that the sky would have streaks of light from the stars, and due to the fact that the black hole bends the light that bounces off it, we might see duplicated objects around us. Furthermore, we will see the entire formation and history of the black hole since its inception. Isn't it weird that we get to discover such an important piece of information only when we are inside the black hole? If we were to waltz through a black hole today, we would discover that the concept of time slows down forever when one is close to the hole's intense gravity. In the real world, we would have slowed so much that if an image of the black hole were taken, we would appear frozen in such a photo. However, for us, the motion of the universe has accelerated to the point where if we look back out as we flow toward singularity, we would discover that the universe would go past us. The difference is that we are not inside it. Does this now mean that there is no means of escape for anyone who gets inside the black hole? There is no need to worry because it is not totally hopeless. 
Although it is considered far-fetched and beyond the boundaries of theoretical physics, some researchers have presented a means of escape. This escape route is based on the premise that if the black hole was a warm route, it could take us through another part of the universe through a phenomenon known as spaghettification. Spaghettification, also known as the noodle effect, is an area of astrophysics that involves the vertical stretching and horizontal compression of objects into long, thin shapes, just like spaghetti. This means that if we were to sail through a black hole, at some point, we would be compressed into spaghetti-like structures by a very strong, non-homogeneous gravitational field and would reappear at some other end of the universe. Now, there is a possibility that there is someone or something at the other end of the universe who could pick up pieces of our destroyed quantum information and make us whole again. Fascinating, isn't it? Having heard this, would you be interested in traveling through a supermassive black hole with a team of explorers? You never can tell what you would meet on the other side. You just might be one of the first persons to step into a new portal of the universe, one that is home to extraterrestrials we have never met before. Thanks for watching another Voyager episode till the end. For more exciting discovery videos, click the next video on your screen.